Flycast has come a long way, having started out as mostly an Android emulator. Nowadays, it can run on just about everything, including computers. But did you know that it can emulate several systems, including the Dreamcast, Naomi, Naomi 2, and finally, the Atomus Wave? That is truly awesome. And in this quick tutorial, I will show you how to set things up for the best gaming experience. To start off, go to the Flycast website and download the emulator. You'll notice that this is for the standalone version. Some of you will know that Flycast can be played on RetroArch, but the standalone version is more advanced. I'm on Windows, so I will download the applicable version. Please note that the latest revisions are always at the top of the page. The download shouldn't take long, so when you're done, just copy the file to your desktop. You can install the emulator anywhere, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll put it on my desktop. Then I'll create a folder and call it Flycast. The archive only contains a single executable. Copy it straight into the Flycast folder. The emulator is now installed. Now I'm going to run the program once to set up default settings. When I'm done, you'll notice a few extra files in the folder. Flycast doesn't come with the BIOS files that we need to get the games running. Technically, it's illegal for developers to include these files with the emulator, so it's up to us to download them separately. Luckily, I uploaded these files for your convenience. These BIOS files are for the Dreamcast, Naomi, Naomi 2 and Atomus Wave. So all the systems are covered here. The BIOS files go straight into the data folder, as shown here. All the files can be selected at once and simply dragged over. There's nothing more to it. Once back in the main folder, I'll start creating more subfolders for the games. You don't have to do it, but it helps to keep things organized. For now, I'll focus on the arcade games and deal with Dreamcast later. The best place to download arcade games is probably the Internet Archive. So once you've clicked on the link that I provided, scroll down just a little and click on the zip hotlink on the right side of the page. Now look for the relevant ROM sets contained in the list. These are all of the arcade games you need for Flycast. Downloading these will take a while, depending on your location. But once they are downloaded, we can install the games into their folders. Now we can move on to Dreamcast. Create a subfolder in the emulator's main folder. I downloaded two Dreamcast games, and you can see that one seems to be a folder, while the other is a single file. Flycast supports two file types. One is GDI and the other is CDI. GDI games can work with hacks, while CDI games do not, but GDI games are bigger in file size. So choose whichever works for you. Anyway, after the games are copied into the Dreamcast folder, we can use the emulator for the first time. Head on over to Settings. Under the General tab, change the cable type to VGA. Most games look better when using this setting. Content Location allows us to actually direct those folders we created to the menu so that we can play the games. I'll start adding the Dreamcast games, and when I'm finished, I'll click on Done. Let's run a game now. We'll start with Skies of Arcadia for the Dreamcast. Pressing Alt and Enter will go into full screen. Emulator settings can be accessed by pressing the Tab key on your keyboard. From there, we can have a look at controls. You should know that everything works out of the box with this emulator. My 360 controller worked without any customization, but you can map buttons to a keyboard if that's your only option. Be aware that you can map buttons for individual games as well. This could be useful if you're not satisfied with the button layouts of certain games. 
there are a few important video settings that you should change. We'll start with transparent sorting, which is best when set to per pixel. It's the most accurate, although it's more demanding as well. Having said that, you should be fine unless you're using a toaster. Anisotrophic filtering is optional. I dialed it to 16 because my hardware can handle it. If you want a visual representation of your performance, turn on FPS counter. Your preferred renderer should be Vulkan. It utilizes most of your hardware's resources. And lastly, upscale the resolution to at least 1080p or higher. This will make your graphics nice and clear. As it was with control settings, you also have the option to use custom graphics settings for each game. You can utilize it if needed, but for now, I'm ready to move on. So if you want to return to the game, just follow my example. I just completed setting the controls and graphics for every game. From now on, even the arcade games will run at these settings. If you found my guide useful, please consider giving a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.